with your bow? Madam Chairman, Senators, I'm Mike Serpoy from the 8th Senate District in Jackson County here to present Senate Bill 375. It is a tweak to our chapters on child abuse. In its main part, it attempts to, uh, it attempts to give the department flexibility on decisions of protective custody, make sure the division has responsibility to investigate or make or an appropriate family assessment presently if a safe care facility uh, report is the report source. Uh, this isn't always done. If insufficient evidence is found, the letter will say that the case is closed. When a child is taken into protective custody, the bill outlines information and material that the parents must be giving, including accusations, copy of the petition, order for protective custody, and notice of right to counsel. If a family is financially unable to afford counsel, one will be appointed for the custody hearing. Today, an attorney is not included until after the custody hearing. All written records will be available to the family. And the sixth part is the department and state courts administrators shall create a home book covering the process. I'd be happy to answer any questions. So my understanding is right now, parents are not always notified um, of their rights. We, cre we created a parent's bill of rights, I don't know, five or six years ago to try to address that. And this seems to be building on that work. Is that right? That's, that's true. I found in, and I had a, a personal uh, exposure to this about a year and a half ago and learned a lot more about these chapters than I ever did before. Yeah. And I found that they, they, I know they're supposed to, and I don't know, saying it twice means they really will, but uh, yes, that's, that's a problem. And they're supposed to leave documents and, and that was not the case either. Okay, so one of the things that I noticed is your language doesn't have enforcement provisions. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we struggle with with Children's Division, in particular when they are not following the statute as written, is we're all loath to do anything like cut funding because we don't want to impact right. the kids that are in care. Mm -hmm. But it's also infuriating that we continue to pass every year more and more statutory requirements to try to force them to follow things like finding f kinship to make sure parents know what their rights are. Um, all while protecting kids who actually are suffering from abuse and neglect. Um, have you had any discussion about enforcement mechanisms? I have not, and, and I should have probably said before we started or as I was speaking that, um, as you said, I'm not trying to blow up the system. At first, when I first saw what was going on and, and how vulnerable, probably 96% of the time, the kids are really in trouble and they, they need the powers they have, but when they don't, and when they're wrong, it's horrible for families. And there's no way to unwind this, I found. And so with your help and the committee's help, I would love to get good language that actually moves the ball a little bit, but at the same time doesn't hurt the department and their efforts. Sure. A any further questions for the senator? Thank you, Senator. Thank Anyone you. here to testify in support? Anybody here to testify in support? Okay, seeing none, is there anyone here to testify in opposition? Seeing none? Anyone here for information purposes only? Okay, well, this is a fairly substantive change to the statute. I'm surprised to hear that our child welfare um, advocates and the department, et cetera, have not chosen to engage. Um, we'll get this exact out as fast as possible. Um, I'm gonna check in with the committee when they all come back in and see if we, they feel comfortable adding it to the list. And if they do, we'll get it moving and see if we can't get some engagement on this proposal. Thank you. Senator Trent, if you'd come forward to present Senate Bill 349. I hope you don't mind here for a second. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Uh, my name is Curtis Trent, representing District 20. Uh, Senate Bill 349, uh, it would allow a county to sell a county-owned nursing home. Um, in particular, there's a, there's a specific uh, instance where this is needed uh, in Greene County, one of the counties I represent. Uh, there is a, a facility uh, that the county owns that does not wish to own that it would like to uh, have converted into a, a new mental health care facility. 
Uh, and so it, it is uh, hope that the, with this statutory change, counties would have the flexibility to be able to divest themselves of these kinds of assets uh, to put them into more productive use. Uh, there is an amendment contemplated that would uh, require that a nursing home sold in this fashion would be used uh, by a entity that seeks to put in a, a health, a, a, some kind of other health care service, uh, and if, if the committee agrees with that amendment, uh, the, the idea there is just to prevent the wasting of any existing infrastructure uh, that, that might already be present on site, which is the case in, in the scenario that is contemplated, but obviously this would be a law that would apply generally throughout the state. So I'd be happy to answer any questions if there are any. Thank you, Senator Trent. Are there any questions for the Senator? Seeing none. Anyone here to testify in support of Senate Bill 349? Madam Chair, members of the committee, Will Mars on behalf of Greene County and the Greene County Commission. Uh, we want to thank the sponsor for bringing this bill forward. We'd like to see some uh, private employer, employers and private entities uh, take over uh, any sort of county owned nursing home if, if that would be the best case for uh, access to care. Thank you. Are there any questions for this witness? Seeing none. Next, in support. Madam Chairman, members of the committee, Jewel Paddock, a lobbyist on behalf of Acadia Healthcare. We have a facility in Springfield currently that serves adolescent children, behavioral health. We had approached the uh, county to look to expand our services um, in Greene County to for more children. Uh, there's acute need for, for beds for children, and this facility would serve that nicely, but it, under current statutory restrictions, we're unable to do so. So we hope the committee would look favorably on this change, and thanks, the Senator, for bringing it forward. For this witness. Seeing none, thank you for your testimony. Thank you. Anybody else in support? Chair, members of the committee, Nikki Strong with Missouri Healthcare Association here to go on record and support um, as well. And I believe the bill doesn't apply just to your county, right? It would be any yep. county on home, which we would support that from a statewide perspective as well. Any questions for this witness? Seeing none, thank you. Anyone else here in support? Mr. Paddock, did you fill out a form or submit it online? Okay, thanks. Okay, seeing none, anyone else here to testify in opposition? Seeing none, anyone here for informational purposes only? Okay, seeing none, we'll now move, we're gonna pause real quick and now having a quorum, take the roll. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Senator Coleman. Here. We have a quorum. And having a quorum, I think we're just going to move right into executive session. So we'll now be considering Senate Bill 212, introduced by Senator Beck, requiring surgical uh, smoke plume evacuation policies for hospital and ambulatory surgical smoke. I now make a motion to take up Senate Bill 212. Do I have a second? Senator Arthur second. Senate Bill 212 is now before the committee. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, I now move to vote out Senate Bill 212 due pass. Do I have a second? <coughs> Senator Carter seconds. This is a roll call vote. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Senator Coleman. Aye. Carter. Aye. Arthur. Aye. Gannon. Here. Aye. Moon. Aye. Thompson Rader. By your vote of six to zero, you have due passed Senate Bill 212.
So um, I would like to ask the committee to indulge me. Senator Searpoy is having a hard time receiving engagement on Senate Bill 375. We heard that bill this morning. Um, I think that there's still work to be done on the bill, but in the interest of bringing partners to the table to have discussions with him, I'd like to exec on that bill this morning to send a sign that it's important to work with our Senate sponsors. If there's any concern or objection whatsoever to doing that immediately, I'm happy to not do that. So Senator Moon? 375 it's related to child welfare provisions and the protection of children it is a fairly comprehensive bill there are a lot of moving parts to it and I think that that's part of the frustration of a lack of engagement of the, the partners excuse me and I just think that rather than rewarding an inability an, not engagement of the senator we should try to move it along but again if anyone has any problems with that I'm happy to do it next week okay no problem, then we'll go ahead and move into it next week. We're moving out of executive session then, and I would like to see Senator Arthur please present Senate Bill 84. Good morning. I think it's morning. My time schedule feels a little messed up at the moment, but uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to present this bill. Afford affordable housing shortages exist in every corner of the state, and they affect all kinds of families, from young families to seniors living on fixed incomes. So ensuring that a safe, affordable place to call home, uh, it's become even more important during these times and it's important for improving educational outcomes and economic stability, upward mobility, and long-term economic growth. So Missouri's Housing Trust Fund is supported by a $3 fee on real estate recording documents, and a portion of the fee goes to creating affordable housing opportunities for eligible low-income households. Traditionally, um, they've been used to subsidize construction and rehabilitation of affordable homes and apartments, but in 2022, only 35% of qualified applications were funded, and that is due to the, the lack of revenue. Uh, this fee was established in 1994, and it has not been increased. Missouri's housing trust fund lacks or lags behind other states by tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars. So my bill would raise this fee from $3 to $9. It also simplifies the eligibility for receiving assistance. Um, now to be eligible, the project must be geared toward people or families making a combined adjusted gross income that's less than or equal to 50% of the median family income for that geographical area. Um, and half of the loan or grant funds awarded must go to projects geared toward people or families making less than 30% of the medium income for the area. Um, by comparison, uh, I mentioned that we haven't raised our fee, but by comparison, other states' fees, their totals include um, $60 in Oregon, $33 in Kentucky, $60 in Connecticut, Ohio's is $17. Um, so by comparison, we really are among the lowest states for this fee that supports affordable housing. Happy to answer any questions. I have some really dumb questions for you. No, I bet they're not dumb. What, um, what is this fee assessed on? Um, recording documents. And do you have a chart of where we are with the other, with other states? I can get that information you to you. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Any questions for the senator? Okay, seeing none. Thanks. Anyone here to testify in support of Senate Bill 284? We have an active committee this morning. Anyone here to testify in opposition? Anyone here for informational purposes only? Thank you, Senator. Do you have any closing comments? Thank you. This will end the hearing on health and welfare. <laughs>